Uh, let's see. Um, I do have a normal list of people to thank. Uh, Tellos, of course. John, uh, look, you gave us so many points that I'm gonna have, you're going to have to work with me, John, and we're going to have to sort of take these one at a time. I've got them boiled down a little bit. So can we do that, take them one at a time, why you think the Earth is flat? Um, sure. Yeah, if, if that's the way that you want to do it, we can do it however you want to. Well, it's your show, and, and right. at first I want to say I'm a, I'm a big fan, uh, long-time listener, love your stuff. Thank you. All right, um, so let us do that then uh, in the interest of time, because the doctor can only be with us. He's on the East Coast. Uh, we've got him at best a couple of hours. So um, if you both will hold on, what we'll do is we'll get our break out of the way, and then we'll come back and we'll dive directly into this sort of point by point, if, uh, if that would be all right, John. That's kind of the way I want to do it, if, if you're in agreement. Sure. Okay, good. Hold it right there. John is here, along with Dr. Josh Grindley. Again, I maintain operating way below his pay grade, but that's okay. We'll proceed with this and kind of go point by point. So, um, John, uh, if you're there, I'm going to skip the first two uh, and go directly to... We have a gazillion pictures of Earth from space. Uh, or we should have, I guess. Why don't we have a gazillion pictures of Earth from space? Instead, we have just one. And you add its brand new one that's obviously fake. And... I guess, what are you saying, John, that the picture of Earth from space looks flat? Uh, no, that's not what I'm saying at all. Okay. And, um, and I think at first, uh, if we skip the two, the first two points, that's uh, kind of doing it injustice to the argument. But um, if we can loop back to those or whatever, I think they are important points to make. All right. Well, uh, all right. Real quick then. When was the last time you skeptically scrutinized the globe model? Is that your first one? Yep. Um, I don't know. I've got a globe at home. I scrutinize it all the time because I've traveled around it about three times. So, I don't know. I'm pretty familiar. Uh, how about you, Doctor? Well, I don't think there's much doubt that the uh, globe is spherical. We've got lots of pictures of it. We've all traveled around it. I've been around it many times. I have friends who've been in orbit. I haven't. But I would love to do that sometime. Boy, me you too. You can go around it in 90 minutes. So I think this whole debate is silly, is, uh, quite amusing, but I'm okay. happy to be part of it. All right. Uh, John, a response? Absolutely. And, and I think um, there may be some clarification needed on the, the term scrutinized or skeptically uh, reviewed the globe model because – there are a lot of, you know, things that seem to, uh, you know, make the, the Earth seem like a globe. But at the same time, um, isn't it possible that we were all sort of taught all of these um, quote-unquote truths and known facts about the globe when we were just very small children? But, and, but, but John, you're talking uh -huh. to two people, myself and the doctor, who have been around the world several times. You know, it's, it's kind of like we have a... Li in fact, I went up in the Concorde on the way to Paris, you know, the supersonic uh, plane when we had it. And sure. at, at 67, 68,000 feet, I promise you, John, taint flat. Well, John, so, you had a, you, there was a nice mm -hmm. view of the curved horizon of the Earth uh, about a year ago when that fellow jumped out of a balloon 130,000 oh, feet above New Mexico. That's right. Beautiful pictures. With the fisheye lens, right. No, no, it wasn't a fisheye lens. <laughs> I, no, I actually, know the, it was. It was a go, it was a GoPro uh, fisheye lens, which makes all the uh, uh, all straight lines appear curved. And well, I don't if, know. You're, if you're if you're in the if you're in the Concorde, I'm sorry to interrupt, but if you're in the Concorde and you see the totally flat uh, horizon, which is an equidistant circle all around you, um, as altitude is gained, the horizon level never drops. So if we did live on a globe, the higher and higher you went in altitude and the further and further your field of uh, vision goes, you know, your angle of attack on the horizon is going to get wider and wider as altitude is gained. But if we did live on a sphere, then it should drop lower and lower the further away you can look. Um, and actually, that's um, measurable, and we can measure that. John, that's exactly what was observed by the Apollo astronauts in 1969 as they left Earth. They saw the globe get smaller and smaller, drop farther and farther away below them. The How Apollo, are you going to respond to that, John? 
the Apollo astronauts, I'm sorry to say, and you know, I was raised... Oh, it's, that's right. You think it's all in a, in a movie lot somewhere. Is, is that, <laughs> no, the, well... Um, I, it wasn't real? Is that it, John? What I'm telling you is, is the Apollo missions were demonstrably false. Oh, oh I see. Gee. Okay. All of, the, all of the rocks were clearly manufactured in some... Well, no. I mean, even somewhere. even by the even by standard science. Okay, so you have these uh, radiation barriers uh, about what a thousand or three thousand miles above the surface, called the Van Allen radiation mm-hmm. belts. Yes, I'm which, very familiar which, with those, John. Okay. Yeah, they had just been discovered, and they were still being sort of scrutinized and debated when the Apollo missions were launched. And so, you know, you could argue that it's irresponsible of NASA that they didn't include any sort of radiation shielding because uh, Van Allen did warn them about the radiation. Okay, um, well, however, we're, get, we're off on Apollo a, missions. Yeah, we're off on a tangent here a little bit. We are, yeah. But I think John is denying the physical yeah. evidence. That's the, that's the trouble with his with his theory. It doesn't doesn't conform to fact. No, so in other words, NASA, fit, then, then it becomes all uh, you know gimmickry and 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 fakery, and so there was no Apollo. It was all you know done in a movie lot. That John, that that scam has been proposed long ago, but you, it's a very rare group of people that still subscribe to it. I'm surprised that you do. NASA is a pack of liars that oh, was founded really? by Freemasons. Oh, Freemasons. And oh my goodness! All right, let's well, try. I, you know, I, uh, Art. I don't know. I don't think this debate is going to be very useful when we have such biased views and and such lack of comprehension of simple facts well, and figures. Maybe uh, well, how are you going to you respond know, here, to the fact that Columbus was aware the Earth was round? He watched masts of ships appear before the ships appeared. That's what happens on a spherical globe, John. There's, That's there's a fallacy. Good one. Oh, good one. That is a fallacy. We have excellent. No, it's, no, not it's, not. it's observed fact. Go out and go out on a, on a boat and you'll <laughs> see it for yourself. Obviously, Actually, they're sir. going to see the, the mast first, John. Of course, they are. Um, the the old the old wives' tale is that when a ship travels away from you, as it goes beyond the horizon, you're supposed to be able to see the you know the bottom sort of travel away from you last. But if you actually look at a ship that travels beyond the horizon with a telescope, you'll see that it is actually just perfectly perpendicular to the horizon. It just sort of seems to go behind the horizon because that's how the laws of perspective work. No, um, it's, John. No, no. You see the mast disappear Have you looked at the, last. Have you looked at the pictures or the videos, Doctor? Uh, I, I've seen this myself. It's, it's, it's obvious. Have you been out at sea on a boat? Flat, nice, calm sea with 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 no waves. I too. have, I have indeed, and uh-huh. it, you know when I've been out many times. And when I was young, I remember saying, "Wow, you can see the curve of the Earth out here on the ocean." But what you're seeing is an equidistant circle around you, um, because that's how perspective works. That's how the horizon. Oh, John, I don't. I'm afraid you don't understand geometry. This is very simple so, spherical geometry, plane spherical. geometry. Okay, understood by the Greeks two thousand years ago. We can get into spherical geometry if you want to do that. No, oh, I'd I don't be want happy to. to. Okay. But I, 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 I think uh, let's hear some more. Yeah, you know, we've got so many points uh, here. That, that let's do them one at a time. All right. For example, um, how can we see vertical, comma perpendicular buildings from over fifty miles away? They ought to be a quarter mile below the horizon. That's correct. And we don't see the bottom of those buildings 50 miles away. That's right. We don't see the bottom of the buildings, Doctor, but that's because of the laws of perspective. No, um, the no, laws? It's not. <laughs> it's what? Not. Perspective has nothing to do with it. Doctor, with all due respect, perspective uh, has everything to do with it. The curvature of the Earth, you can measure it uh, simply by uh, its eight, eight inches times the mile squared. And that's how, um, that's how much drop should occur every mile away from the observer's eye. So it's eight inches per mile squared. So uh, if, if it's one mile, it's simply an eight-inch drop. And if it's two miles, uh, the mile squared, so it's uh, four times eight inches, which is a 32-inch drop. At three miles, it's nine times eight. That's 72-inch drop. And when you get out to 50 miles, th- those buildings should be based a full quarter mile below the horizon, and they should be angled away from your perspective. But instead, we can see them perpendicular to the horizon, perfectly vertical, perfectly visible from well over 50 miles away. John, that's because we have topography on the surface of the globe. We're not living on a, you know, on a ball bearing, in case you haven't noticed. 
So, so you're t- so you're saying that the you water look out has at a city fifty it? miles away, you're not. Of course, you're not seeing the curvature of the Earth. You're seeing the topography of the land. With all due respect, Doctor, I, I think it's high time that you apply some rational skepticism towards. No, 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 the no, model. no. I'm perfectly rational. That's what science is all about. All right, you sir, go back you- to the ocean, you, mm-hmm. you and the mast disappearing last. You have precisely what we're talking about. That has nothing to do with perspective. You're actually, um, if you look at the videos, there's video evidence. There's plenty of it. Um, you're wrong. That's a wives' tale. That's not no, what happens. No, does simple, everything simple come down to fact. perspective? Is, is every course. argument going to come down to perspective? Yeah. I, well, I'd, like, fact, I'd like to hear perspective right. defined here. This is a very interesting use of the word perspective, which has nothing okay. to do with spherical sure. problem. Per- exactly. That's exactly right. Perspective works on a flat plane. Um, the further away from you objects travel, the smaller and smaller they appear to get. Agreed? That's for a fixed finite size, yes, of course. That's nothing more than the angular size that you're talking about. Okay. So uh, what happens What happens to that object when it gets beyond the vanishing point? On a, no, flat, no. Pla- on a flat plane. There's, there's, there's no vanishing point. If you had – you have to understand some physics here, John. It, it doesn't just vanish – Objects will get smaller and smaller, as you just said. They'll become very, very small, but then you don't resolve them any longer because something called diffraction prevents you from resolving them. Doctor, with all due respect, I would okay. respect, John, I John, with all due respect, we've got only so much time. Uh, okay. here's, a, here's another I think point. We're getting off the subject here. <laughs> yeah. How can a westbound flight, John says, from New York to Los Angeles have identical duration? on a globe spinning about a thousand miles per hour east uh, with its return flight. John, everybody on the globe is spinning together, including the airplane that's flying above the globe. So there's the answer to your question. Okay. We're not, we're not, we're not. So we're all, okay. So we're all moving. That's right. On the equator, we're all moving a thousand miles an hour. Isn't that remarkable? Uh That is remarkable. Why aren't we being thrown off is probably what you're wondering. Now, Doctor, let me ask you a question. Um, what about when the jet engines propel the plane westward? Do you, mm-hmm. agree, do you agree that the plane should be traveling in the opposite direction as the spin of the Earth? Yes. It's, it's, it, the spin of the Earth is the whole frame of reference. That it's the whole frame of reference. The, but, the object- doctor, doctor, objects moving in opposite directions have a much higher relative difference in speed than objects moving in the same direction. So an eastbound flight should be uh, a much longer flight than a westbound flight, shouldn't it, Doctor, since the world is supposedly spinning towards the east? Uh, That's correct, but there is uh, something that you may have noticed. It's called wind and weather, which Mm -hmm. is what makes the difference between eastbound and westbound flights. It's the circulation of the atmosphere that the plane is flying through. Mm Mm-hmm. Jet stream, but the too. plane is flying over the Earth as a fixed frame of reference, which is indeed rotating, uh, but so is the plane. So there's no relative motion relative to the spin of the Earth. There's no relative motion relative to the spin of the Earth. So, you're, argu- so you're arguing that objects traveling in opposite directions don't have a, d- a higher uh, relative difference in speed than objects no, traveling at the because same because time. Here, John, look, you're, you're, you're getting mixed up here. No, when the sir, plane New takes York off from New York, up. it is on a spinning platform. And whether it's going east or west, it always has that angular velocity that it had when it left the always. airport. Always. 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 The, okay. Okay, so, and that has know, nothing to do with its velocity relative to the ground. That's the, the laws of reference. motion state that an object in motion will tend to maintain its velocity until enacted upon by some other force. <laughs> and with all due respect, Doctor, don't you consider several jet engines attached to a plane some other force? That's what's propelling the plane over the earth, the surface of the earth. That's the frame of reference that we've just defined. But, the problem so the is not the frame of reference. The has nothing to do with the motion of the plane the, from New the York to The problem is, is that you are incapable of even theorizing that our world is no, anything no, but I a spinning globe. I can fully understand what our globe is no, doing. John, let him, John let him finish. Okay, I'm sorry. No, I, I, I've just repeated the same point several times, but I don't think John is quite understanding that there is a, a frame of reference that the plane has taken off from. And when it lands in wherever it's going, it's on that s- still in that same f- frame of reference. We could expand this, if you like, John. It's not just that the Earth is spinning. We're moving around the sun at, at an enormous velocity. 
mm-hmm. 30 kilometers per second. All of us. Yep. That makes the spin of the Earth look trivial. But again, that has nothing to do with, you know, the motion of the plane in flight from, you know. Now, I, I think that we sort of using relative velocities because you're making it as if the plane were flying in a frame of reference that was the ether, as it used to be called, uh, before we understood what space was all about. And that's not what what's going on here. The plane has taken off from a point on the solid earth you would like it to be flat but of course it's demonstrably round but that has nothing to do with with the, your your misconception about relative velocities no it has nothing to do with relative velocity sir it no, has that's to what do. you're trying to say you're saying if i'm flying east i'm flying faster than i'm flying it has, it has to do okay so if you're driving down the highway and uh you're going 65 miles an hour down the highway and the car coming towards you is going 65 no, miles no, that's hour. that's what we mean by relative velocities but that's where you're uh, wrong uh, john because uh, no that's where you're wrong sir uh well john this is this is getting to be slightly ridiculous uh, it is you're you're right because see i've been i grew up on planet earth and i am fully aware of the globe model and all of the reasoning behind it but see the the, the difficult thing is is to have uh even a, a very intelligent uh, person such as yourself even consider for a, just a scientific theory you know just for a little bit of uh uh you know like a mind experiment to even sit down for a minute and theorize you know maybe the world is flat and stay and I think flat Earth is a bad word for it because it implies that infinite space is somehow true. Um, that's not the model whatsoever. We're not, you know, a disk floating around in space, if that's what most people want to think. Um, the model that I subscribe to is an infinite plane model where um, basically the sun has uh, carved out a puddle while uh, traveling around the magnetic center, which is fixed on our North Pole. And uh, what you know as the Antarctic is actually the boundaries, the outer edge of the dartboard, essentially. Well, okay, John, if we don't want to talk about relative motion, because I think we're not getting very far in that, because you haven't understood what I've been saying, let's, let's no, talk you about your model for the, for the sun. I, I exactly. I, uh, I've heard right, the hold argument on. that you've hold made. On. No, hold I would on, love John. to hear more about your model for the sun. That's, that's very interesting. So, what, so the sun is this magical thing that is, is circling around the Earth. What... What power is this thing? It's not obviously something that we normally think of as the sun well, and a star. A good, that's a good question, but it's so, obviously... So is this all some some mysterious source of energy that can circle around the the plane, the infinite plane that we're living on? It, it's no more mysterious than gravity, but I believe it's uh, some type of magnetic anomaly. Um, there are yeah, lots of different theories, but um, I think a lot more study and scrutiny needs to go into mm-hmm. it because, believe it or not, it has been irrefutably proved that our world is indeed flat and stationary, well, not that's, a spinning that's, globe. That's and, remarkable because it's contradicting all the evidence we've just been talking about. But the sun makes a very interesting uh, way of testing your model because this uh, magnetic anomaly, as you call it, must be some very peculiar uh, source of energy that we've never even considered before. Is that is that what you would subscribe to? Well, and all those little pinpoints of, points of yeah, light you see in the sky that we call stars, are those just uh, anything like the sun, or are those other magne- magnetic anomalies or whatever this theory of that's, yours you know, that's, a, that's a good question, and, and until you know we uh, fly up there and see, I don't think anybody really knows. Sure, we can look at the light and we can theorize that the sun is 93 million <laughs> miles away, but... Really, the, the same mathematics that's used to prove the sun is 93 million miles away can actually be used to prove that the sun's about 3,000 miles away. And oh, my away. goodness, John. All right, well, you know, that's a great place to break. No, we got to break. We got to break. We have to break here. So everybody hold it. We'll be right back. For Dark Matter News, I'm Leo Ashcraft. Scientists are working on what might be considered the option of last resort for global warming. Researcher Sudanshu Jain said it's an insurance policy. It's called the Marine Cloud Brightening Project, and it's designed to fight global warming by making clouds over the ocean thicker and brighter so they reflect more sunlight and cool the planet. The Sunnyvale team has reached a milestone with a high-pressure nozzle that uses salt water and looks like a normal water spray. But it took scientists a year to come up with the exact rate, flow, and pressure so that the water droplets come out to the perfect size. 
Robert Wood, one of the top atmospheric scientists in the world, says we owe it to the future generations to study it now. Now, I don't think this should be a solution, but I think um, it's morally, uh, for me, is appropriate to at least do the research to find out more about it. The salt particles coming out of this nozzle are so small that in order to see them with the naked eye, you have to turn off the lights and use a laser. Once the nozzle is fine-tuned, the plan is to use a barge to shoot the salt particles into the sky and see what happens. The researchers say you can already see the concept at work. Satellite images show the ship tracks from vessels crisscrossing the ocean, spewing exhaust that turns into clouds and lasts up to a week. The project needs several more years and millions of dollars in funding before its widespread use. NASA has captured a beautiful, rare view of the moon passing in front of the sunlit face of Earth. The stunning animation, taken one million miles from Earth, shows the fully illuminated far side of the moon that is never visible from our planet. That's because our position is tidally locked, which means that we always see the same face pointing towards Earth, although both sides receive equal amounts of light. The animation shows images of the far side of the moon, illuminated by the sun, Also, it crosses between the Discover spacecraft's Earth Polychromatic Imaging Center, camera otherwise known as EPIC, and telescope, as well as the Earth one million miles away. The animation was captured by Earth Polychromatic Imaging Camera aboard the Deep Space Climate Observatory. EPIC has a constant view of the fully illuminated Earth as it rotates, providing scientific observations of ozone, vegetation, cloud height, and aerosols in the atmosphere. Once EPIC begins regular observations next month, the camera will provide a series of Earth images, allowing study of daily variations over the entire globe. There's a picture floating around social media. It states that at 1230 on August 27th, you will see two moons in the sky, but only one will be the moon. The other will be Mars. It continues by saying it won't happen again until 2287, adding that no one alive today has ever witnessed this happening. The email and photo are perpetuating a hoax that rears its crazy head every summer since 2003, 12 years running. That's a long time for a hoax to run in our world of information. Mars can never appear as large as a full moon as seen from Earth. Mars isn't even visible in July 2015, and although it may come into view in the east before dawn by August 27, 2015, it won't be anywhere near the July or August full moon. What's more, Mars is nowhere near its brightest or closest in July or August of 2015, or at any time this year. This year so far, Mars has been relatively inconspicuous in our sky. It's on the far side of the sun from Earth. That'll continue to be the case throughout the rest of the year. So how did this rumor of Mars as big and bright as the moon get started? It started with an actual event in 2003. On August 27th of that year, Earth and Mars came slightly closer than they'd been in 60,000 years. Our two worlds, center to center, were less than 35 million miles apart, just over three light minutes apart. The last people to come so close to Mars were Neanderthals. So was Mars as big and bright as the moon, even at its closest in 2003? Never. But the legend continues. I'm Leo Ashcraft for Dark Matter News. John is here. He uh, is not using his real name for business maintenance purposes. And he's debating Dr. Grinley, a very bright, (laughs) very bright guy that we've got to have back on a full show. And I think for many people, John probably just blew his case right clear off the flat earth um, with the, the comment that the sun, for your model to be true, has to be... Did you say 3,000 miles away, uh, John? Yeah, that's correct. That's, that's, that's about 3,000 miles away. That's right. And we, <sighs> we can prove this um, using Euclidean geometry. It's, uh, it's a fairly standard experiment where essentially you uh, measure the angles of the shadow cast by the sun at high noon at, at multiple points with hmm. miles in between each point on the same meridian. John, I was going to mention that our astronauts yeah. went to the moon, which is 250,000 miles away, but I'm sure you're going to come back with, no, they didn't, it was fake, right? No, no nobody's, the, the astronauts never went to the moon. That was all a film. Yes, the, the Apollo missions were films designed okay. to trick the uh, the generation, you guys' generation, into believing in a, in a lie. Well, John, that's really disappointing to hear you say that. I know others have said that, but I'm surprised that a guy of your age 
I don't know how old you are, but that you would you would subscribe to this. I I'm uh, too, it, doctor. It, the what fact about that all he that real live hardware, just all an elaborate fake, I guess, huh? Uh, and do, 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 it's not that elaborate. Off and doctor, and not doctor, doctor. Uh, let me ask John. Let me ask the doctor a question. Uh, look, John is a bright guy. I'm I mean, sure he is. Yeah, but I, that's why I'm really surprised that you can uh, just get so far down, down the the wrong track, John, in thinking about simple geometric concepts let's go back to the sun because i think this is fascinating what right. you're what you're suggesting if the sun were three thousand miles away have you worked out the power that the sun would have to have this magnetic anomaly uh, what produces light and uh, something that is only three thousand miles away to illuminate the whole earth and produce our climate i, I assume you're not questioning that the distance from new york to la is three thousand miles so so you've got the sun about as far away from you, wherever you are right now, I don't know where you are, it doesn't matter, uh, as Stop New York and L.A. are. So, so Surely is, you can't believe that, John, do you? This is amazing. How do, how well, do you no, get it's actually, it's actually, I mean, it's mathematically proved. I mean, if, if you would have let me finish, the standard experiment that's done by, you know, colleges all over the world, mm-hmm. the default answer will always be 3,000 miles away to the sun using that Euclidean geometry. Oh, now, okay. only so, by adding a layer of complexity into the equation and assuming that we live on a sphere with a circ- uh, uh, circumference of uh, 25,000 miles, then do you get the nonsensical answer of 93 million miles away? So, John, let's pursue the 3,000 miles because this is really interesting. Mm-hmm. If it were 3,000 miles, uh, it has to be above us to cast light down on, yep. on onto us. How do I get, uh, you know, daylight in uh in Chicago and uh, San Francisco and New York all at the same time. If, if the sun were only 3,000 miles up, there would be a much larger uh, well, first off, you're, you're, diurnal effect. That's Understood. a good point. And it's a, yeah, and much it's a, more it's than a, three time zones away, so it doesn't work, John. Yeah, it's a good question, and the reason is, see, you're still thinking of the Earth as a globe. You have to. No, no, no. I'm I'm letting it be flat now, so it makes it even worse when it's flat. No, no. Well, then you're, but you're misunderstanding, though. You you got to understand, the North Pole is in the center of the dartboard. Okay, and then the next ring out on, on the dartboard is the northern hemisphere, and then the next ring out on the dartboard is the southern hemisphere. Now, first of all, it, and this is admitted, all of the maps that we have are all wrong. You can fit uh, Canada so, twice in the length of Russia, so all of the relative sizes are wrong on the maps, anyways. So it's really so that an, means if I were walking from A to B, all, all those maps being wrong, I could get there much faster or much longer than I my map would have told me. Is that what you're saying? No, well the maps the maps still work because like okay you can you can walk They're around wrong, but they still the, work okay no no you well you're 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 twisting my words. Um, <laughs> the reason that the, the, the maps are inaccurate is because they're assuming that the Earth is a globe when taking the measurements and, and you, you know, measuring the relative uh, differences in sizes of the continents. But you can you, – you have to study the model. I mean, I wish you would at least study the flat Earth model before assuming that oh, it's – I think it would be fascinating to study because I've, yeah. I've already pointed out to you here, and I'm not sure you've been following what I'm saying, that what your model is suggesting is already you know self-contradictory. We can't have – the same three-hour time difference between New York and L.A. If my light bulb, the sun, is only three thousand miles above them on a flat plane, right? That doesn't work, John. Well, no, that's that's how it works, and you have to understand it's um, when the light from the sun comes through the atmosphere, it does sort of have like a shotgun effect. So essentially, it. Uh, roughly half of the Earth is lit at, at any time by the sun, and the further it gets away from your perspective and it goes behind the horizon, it takes it. A, it goes a lot further, you know, to get behind the horizon because it's on a but much wait, higher plane. Why is there a horizon? The sun is three thousand miles up, and it's a flat plane, so I can be ten thousand miles away in my flat plane. You haven't told me how big the plane is, but I can be ten thousand miles away, and the sun is not behind any horizon. So well, you if you work? go if if you go if you go and study weather balloon footage, I don't know if you've ever looked at. Oh, a lot of I know all about footage. balloons, John. I launched them to you okay. know, forty miles up. That's, every that's, time, yeah, every time you see the sun in those, and balloons, in that every time you see the sun in the weather balloon footage, it'll just be a few degrees above the horizon. 
which um, and there's a there's no, a few other not true, John. Sun can be straight overhead. I I can show you pictures from our own balloon born telescopes. Okay, the well sun then it's straight. Overhead. Overhead. Yeah, he it's actually overhead, launches. So. He actually launches balloons. So listen to that. But it's man. not ninety. Well, I don't launch them. NASA right. launches them. Well, so, yeah. But of course, I think John thinks that this is all a, a, a fake or you know contrived operation. You know, we put balloons forty miles above the Earth, John, with telescopes on them. We do real astronomy, astrophysics. And so all the things you're talking about are simply not the case. I, I've, I haven't been up in the balloon myself, but I've had by experiment and telescopes and detectors and images, just like the guy that jumped out of the balloon with that, you're accusing him with a fisheye lens to somehow made it all a fake shot. If the, that the, Earth if was the horizon curved. appears as a curve from that distance without a fisheye lens, again, it's because it's an equidistant circle around well, you. Well, John, you know, these were regular cameras that this guy used, and they weren't fisheye lenses. He wasn't That's trying fine. to take the picture it, of the whole globe, so there was no distortion in those cameras. Understood. Granted, and the reason that it looks like or appears as a curve is because the horizon will always be an equidistant circle around you at that altitude. <laughs> Well, that's, I guess, your model, but we, we have well, no, that's, all that's this contradictory direct measurement data. We can measure distances. You know, we don't have to imagine what they are on some map. We can measure distances precisely. Radar does that, as you certainly know. So we know what shapes and distances of things are. So there's no ambiguity. There's you know, no you, curvature. You could not fake this. You there simply is no couldn't curvature. fake it. The no, science, fake John, the science about the sun is good, hard, Settled science. No, it well, isn't. All of this is hard, settled science uh, art, uh, including going to the moon. We have well, enormous amounts of data. This we don't is, want to get stuck can, there. He'll he'll take this. us somewhere we don't want to go. Well, uh, I mean, anybody who believes we went to the moon believes in a TV series that was false. I okay. mean, we're going to have to agree See, to disagree on that. John, yes, so John, let's do tell that. Tell me about this. You know, this wonderful, exciting news of of NASA's mission to Pluto a few weeks back. Is that all just a big sideshow as well? We sure. Really Why that. not? How much money are, oh. are they going to get to make that movie? Oh, uh, money. So who's who's making money on these movies, John? I mean, this this is amazing. I, I don't know. Are you? Are you? I don't know. <laughs> no, no, certainly not me, and certainly not NASA. NASA is uh, NASA is not making money in anything. It's doing pure science. This is what gets pure in the textbooks. Science. This is what you should be. You They're know, scratching for a budget. John, this yeah. is what you should have taken back. I don't know. All of NASA's stuff is photoshopped images. Oh, There's, my goodness, John. They, well, they might have some stuff from Hubble that's uh, pictures of the stars, but... It, so, uh, let, let's, let's do Hubble for a second. Yeah, I want good. to hear about Hubble. Hubble. So, we got this beautiful telescope up there, except it's not above a globe. It's above this flat plane. How is it getting those gorgeous pictures? Things that we couldn't even imagine. Are those all photoshopped as well? It, and you know it's amazing that science, um, and you can prove I can I can prove to you that the Earth has no curvature, and I can prove uh, to you that wait, the Earth is stationary. Wait a minute, what are you having done? Too well John, you're not already, responding. The pretty pictures you're from not, science. Yes. So yeah, you're pretty not pictures. responding. The so Hubble. the Hubble stuff is just all just just fluffy pretty pictures and no science. Is that it? They are definitely pretty pictures. They are, but I mean, do they have any reality, or is this just again? Well, have photoshop? you have you? Uh, a guy named Math Boylan was actually a subcontractor for NASA. He did a lot of uh, realistic uh, art of, like, you know, like alien, hypothetical alien worlds with predefined, you know, lighting scenarios with mock celestial events. And yeah. so he was one of the people that actually broke the, the story that NASA was basically faking just about oh everything. Oh, my goodness, John. So are That's you suggesting really the Hubble? You say that. Are you saying the, the Hubble? Whistle- 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 beautiful of the universe. And you're saying... And this guy, this space artist, I, I like space art, by the way. I'm a science fiction fan. But, but you're saying that yeah, this is so much better than, than, than fiction, John. This is the real thing out there. These gorgeous images of galaxies. Yep. A this gazillion cool. light years away. And, and, that trumps and that's, the, that trumps the measurable fact that the Earth is flat and stationary, the pretty pictures. Well, it doesn't trump anything, John. This is reality. This is the world we live in. It is this reality. Is the world that the, uh, the Greeks understood 2,000 years ago. You're just, well, they uh, theorized it 2,000 no, no, years no, no, ago. No, no, John, they didn't. Do, do you know the experiment the Greeks did in a well between Cyrene and northern Egypt and what we would now call Cairo? But... They measured the diameter of the Earth and proved it was round by simultaneously, amazing they could do this, measuring the depth of a, a sunbeam into a well. 
on two different mm-hmm. points on a meridian. So just think of and it. That's as why we can north get, That's why we can go forty miles into the air with a weather balloon, and there's no curvature of the horizon. John, the Greeks proved there was curvature, and they <laughs> measured the diameter of the Earth. We can see they it with our own eyes, sir. Four hundred BC. You're uh, failing to see what's right in front of you because you cannot imagine our world as no, anything. No, I, but I can imagine what you're talking about, and no, I just had, have trouble uh, taking it seriously because it's so demonstrably well, false. And, and, and you're and refusing you. to listen to the fact. No, well, look, if, hang on a second, and I'll tell you. Uh, Six months ago, I would have agreed with you that our world is a globe spinning around the sun, and if you would have mentioned the word flat Earth, I would have laughed and gone about my business. Okay, there, do you have an second. accident? Okay. Did something happen? Did yeah, something I, happen? Yeah, yes. I looked at the evidence and I scrutinized it in both models, and I found that uh, the only one logical, correct answer is yep. the is the infinite plane model. And I'm sorry, you know, it sounds crazy. It, um, you haven't well, given it enough thought yet, but I'm telling you that it's the truth. No, no, I, it's fascinating, John, to hear your reasoning. But tell tell me, I, I'm really curious. What was it? Uh, I guess this is what Art was asking. How is it that all of a sudden, after how many years uh, you've been, you know, aware of of your everyday surroundings, which I'm sure you've always been, what was it that all of a sudden tipped the scales? And just six months ago, you gave up on this thing well, that I was, uh, was yeah. second nature to everyone that, it, that we're on a globe, and it became flat. Well, and the reason it's the reason it's second nature to us is because it's drilled into our minds since our very first day at, at school. You learn one plus one is two, and the world is a globe. I mean, that's mm-hmm. that's how that's how early they get you with the propaganda. And to answer your question, what happened was is I was simply compelled to look at the evidence, and um, I, I think it's high time that the rational, skeptical scientists mm-hmm. of the world take a little time to just rationally, skeptically look at the globe, which is something that you have yeah. not done. Since you no, 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 John. That's where I beg to differ. Uh, I've done this. All of us have done that. You're absolutely right. We should look uh, skeptically at uh, our surroundings, and we should rely on s- pure measurement and observation and not uh, make assumptions. And if you follow that course, that's what science is all about. Okay. You would be forced to conclude, John, there's absolutely no alternative that we are indeed on a globe that our globe is spinning, that our globe is not only spinning, it's orbiting the sun. Uh, Ptolemy went through all this. Ptolemy, of course, had this uh, Earth-centric view. And see, Copernicus that is- came along and un- understood that it was just... The, and that is exactly uh, why that is exactly heliocentric view, and we've been on that course ever since. All of the all of the dis- misconceptions and things that didn't quite fit in the Ptolemaic view of what our solar system is all about, which was a much much simpler thing to understand. We had no clue that there were galaxies or and everything else going on until the 1920s. So this is thou- the last several hundred years. Uh, 500 years, 400 years since Copernicus when all of this revolution has taken place, but right up through the last 50 years. So what you, you're doing the right thing to be skeptical, but this is exactly what science have you, has done. Doctor, have you, ever read, have you ever read Zetetic Astronomy by uh, Dr. Uh, Robotham? No, I'm afraid I haven't read that. Well, you, you ought to read it because it actually, there's a lot of great proof. And, and, and you know, you want to talk about science. Okay, let's talk about the North Star Polaris. Um how does the North Star Polaris maintain its alignment? And, you know, people say it's hundreds of years, or some people say it's thousands of years. Some people say, oh, well, it changed once. But the point is... No, no, is no. If- can, I, can I just jump in sure, here? Sure. Polaris does not maintain its alignment. The Earth is a spinning top, and if you remember as a kid playing with the top on a tabletop, you pull the string and it spins and it's kind of stationary, and then it starts to wobble. Remember how that worked? It wobbles, and then eventually the top falls over on, the, on your desk or tabletop. That's exactly what the Earth is doing. It's a spinning gyroscope, and because it's spinning, it's wobbling. It's processing, we call it. The reason it's doing that is because the moon is producing a gravitational <laughs> pull on the Earth. Wait a minute. What this about, is simple the, what about physics. the North Star Polaris? So the North Earth. Star doesn't always stay over the North Pole. It's the North moving Star on Polaris. a circle, and it the moves North around every 26,000 years. Mm, so, no. Okay. So no, you're it does, about, John. You're, you're talking about the precession of the equinoxes, but... Um, that's, that's exactly mm, what I'm talking about. That's what makes the North Star no longer the North Star. The, the ancient Egyptians didn't have a North Star to line up north on on building the Great Pyramids. The North Star was 
was way off. The, uh, Polaris, rather, the star was there, of course, but it was no longer lined up with the spin axis of the Earth. All of this is well known. This so you were, you were around. You were around back then. We we know exactly where Polaris was five thousand years ago. Too. You do. Okay. Yes, we do. Just like you. Just because like you we know can, the Earth is a globe. Okay. No, 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 John. The difference is I can measure it. I can measure where Polaris was. But you can't five measure years ago. There's no curvature. And I can measure that there is curvature. There, there is so can no you curvature. if you go out in an airplane and uh, measure distances on, on your so-called flat plane. They won't be consistent with a flat plane because it's not a flat plane. It's a so spherical we'll, globe. Can so I ask we'll a question, the, please? Uh, sure. uh, I want to ask a question. Sure. Uh, when you fly, yeah, I'm running out of time here, Art, but let's, let's have a few more questions, right. I well, guess. Well, well, this is my question. When you fly from Los Angeles <laughs> to, let us say, Hong Kong, uh, and you, you measure the distance. That we can do scientifically. I, I, I hope John believes we can do that scientifically. Do you, John? Well, of course you can measure measure distance. Okay, or- I know. If you take the great circle route to get there, it's not as far. How come? The great circle. Yeah. yeah. In other words, if you go north and then around, uh, as if, you know, it's a globe, a ball. Well, because you got to understand, the, the, the flat Earth is... Sort of, sort of like the globe model, but it's wrapped around the North Pole. You, you haven't, you have, you have to study the model to understand it. You're trying to apply globe model laws and maps to the flat Earth map. Yes, you got to understand. I'm just talking mileage here. Mileage, yeah. okay. Yeah. Well, then, how can you explain that you can fit the uh, uh, Canada twice into the length of Russia on the standard maps? I, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm asking you a question, and you're responding with another question. Um, exactly. Yeah. That's, it's, that's the point. I mean, you, you can't go by the maps that you're looking at because they're inaccurate. Well, John, <sighs> they can be confirmed by going out. If you wanted to go out with a, a ruler stick, you can measure what your map should be telling you. That's the way maps are constructed. You probably know all about GPS. I don't know if you have a cell phone, but that's what tells you where you are, again, on the surface of a globe. Are you familiar if you're, with Nikola, If your theory you were right and you're living Tesla's on this powers? distorted flat plane, GPS wouldn't work. Nothing would work. You'd are be, you familiar that, with N- Nikola Tesla's towers that he invented? I think it was like, what, in the 20s or 30s or whatever, where it, it was a basically wireless communication. John, you're doing it again. A question. That. That's, that's where radio communication began. That's, that's precisely yeah. what's used to... Triangulation. Yes. Yeah. yes. I know. Cell, I know. Phone, cell phone towers. Yes, of course, John. Uh-huh. That's exactly what what we're talking about. But the we don't even. Why would we need given, satellites if we can bounce um, radio waves off the ionosphere anyway? Oh, oh you know oh, what, John, no, gentlemen, no, no, gentlemen, gentlemen doctor, there. hold, we, hold we tight. We're, we're at a break. Precise positions. That I, way. I have yeah. to break. The I have to break. Disturbs the, the signal to begin with. Hold it right there, gentlemen. I have to break. This is radio. I have to deal with time. This is midnight. I would like to get a couple more points in. I can. I can sense the doctor is getting close to bailing, um, but uh, a couple of more points. And, for example, uh, here's one. Uh, John says, how can the upper atmosphere be adjacent to the vacuum of outer space? Gravity, John. (laughs) Gravity Gravity pulls the atmosphere, keeps it on this round globe. Why is it round? Because that's the equilibrium shape that a mass must assume. That's why stars are round, spherical. They're not pancakes. So all of this we understand, John. But again, I, I, I'm not trying to sound like I'm belittling. I, 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 I hope I don't convey that. I'm trying to convince you, John, that you ought to, res- you ought to lighten up here and, and, and understand what the whole world of science has arrived at, not just recently, but over hundreds of years, and with such incredible discovery in the last decade or two. Those those Hubble images we were talking about, I could also talk about X-ray images <laughs> that we have from the so Chandler gravity, Telescope. So it's gravity and we, you got gravity. And, and, and you think they're all fake. It's just, this is just so discouraging. Well, it's everything like that is, does seem to be proof, Doctor, you're right, seems to be then judged to be fake by John. And John sounds like such a well, bright uh, guy that I just can't figure how he, and he obviously believes well, that's, this. That's why I was asking what happened six months ago. I mean, it's great to have a moment of truth and say, my God, what is the world I'm living in? That's that's fine. I'm all in favor of that. But to deny rational thinking and 
thousands of years, beginning with the Greeks, who I keep coming back to. They're so oh, the amazing irony. what the irony. Greeks did. But all of modern science, and you've got it all cooked up to be a giant hoax. It's just so you, uh, say, so you say that it's the magic of gravity that keeps the atmosphere. It's not magic. There's no magic of gravity at all. We, from Isaac Newton to- taught us what gravity is, <laughs> and we now understand it in Isaac Newton's glorious details. Detail. Okay, hold on. Now, first of all, gravity was theorized in order to account for the fact that we're not flung from the spinning Earth at a thousand miles per hour towards the east near the equator. Okay, gravity is a theory to prove the globe model. Now, so, you're also saying so, that. John, the, what, the, what, what, what do you suppose keeps you, uh, you know, s- sitting in your chair instead of floating off if there's no gravity? I mean. Well. There's no need. Okay. There's no need for gravity on the flat, stationary Earth that we dwell uh, on. I see. We're, we're not spinning at a thousand <laughs> miles see. per hour, so you don't have to account uh, for that outward thrust generated by the spin. Okay. 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 It's the simple laws of density or buoyancy that causes, um, you know, heavier, denser objects to find their way down, and lighter, less dense objects to find their way up. It's the okay. natural order of things, and there's no no need for gravity to explain the law of physics. What goes up must comes down on the flat. Oh, really? Well, then, I mean, why do things come down? If I if I throw a ball in the air, why should why does it have to come down? Something's pulling it down, John. Well, it's more than likely, sir. It's electromagnetic, but um, gravity oh. has never been proved, sir. It is a theory. Oh, gravity has been proved time and time again, and no, of course, sir. it began with Newton. No, sir. Uh, we're on the verge, surprised. John. If you, if you don't like the proofs of gravity so far, uh, in probably the next five years, there will be a very major discovery that will come from astrophysics, but from physics, really, and that is of waves of gravity, gravitational uh-huh. waves. Which Yeah, that have never been – that have never, ever been detected even though – That's right, but there now is an enormous big years? telescope in – state of Washington and another one in Louisiana and another one in Italy and in, and in Europe and those gigantic gravitational wave telescopes are now almost sensitive enough to detect the gravitational wave sources that we have proven are out Gravity there. Gravity is a theoretical not, not, fantasy that was woof. dreamed up by well, proponents John, of the I, don't, model. I, I, I don't think that's what anybody uh, else but you and your colleagues and your no, uh, that is your, what it is. That's what gravity is. Of nature, uh, was gravity a, was a, I, sir. Gravity was a theory designed or uh, theorized to explain the globe model and why we're not flung from the face. No, no, no. That's not what gravity was designed to do at all. It was no, designed to un, to explain <laughs> the fact that objects fall. It has nothing to do with the globe model. Okay, was, then what is keeping no us? Pin, then what is keeping us pinned to the Earth while we're spinning a thousand miles per hour? Mass, the the mass of the Earth, John. That's what the mass gravity of the Earth. is due to. It is yes, because the Earth is so, not a flat plane. It is gravity, a mass no, that weighs. Gravity is supposedly due to the mass of the Earth warping space time. No, 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 John. No, no, John, no, 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 no. You're getting, you're getting confused. You're, you're jumping ahead to Einstein. Warping <laughs> space time has nothing whatsoever to do with the Earth's gravity. It's a very teeny, teeny, tiny effect, barely measurable. Measurable. It's been measured. Uh, it's not that tiny. But, but Newton, of course, had no conception of this. It was 300 years until Einstein uh, told us and instructed us in his brilliant way about the warping of space and time. But that we haven't talked about. If we were talking black holes, which is what I normally like to think about, we'd be, we'd be having fun discussing warped space time. But gravity on the Earth... No need for any of that. The, nope. the apple falls from the tree. That's you know what Newton observed and said. My yep. God, how could this happen? Because it the apple is denser, and acceleration. The apple is denser than the air above it, and it's not as dense as the ground below it. So that's no. where it that's where it finds its way to, just like everything else. No. It's natural. No, it's, it's no, natural no. order of things. No, then if that were true, John, then we would have everything. If everything were density dependent, all of our laws of motion would be totally different. Airplanes wouldn't fly. Motors wouldn't work. You're defying everything that's around you. Airplanes You're- wouldn't fly without gravity. With all due respect, that is that's ridiculous. Airplanes fly due, due to a barometric or the pressure beneath the wing being different than the pressure above. The wing. But I'm, what I'm saying is that you, you, what you, when you're denying gravity in Newton. You're denying all of the physics, the very simple physics that that, that goes with that, which it's is all, it's all just theory. Devices that you are using in your everyday life. 
You're den- you're denying science. All of no, I'm denying theory. a theory that was dreamed up by proponent- proponents of the globe model that it's demonstrably no. false. Um, again, again, the globe model had nothing to do with it. It really didn't. <laughs> the globe model it was, had it was a conceptualization to- that Newton may have used. He didn't have to. It's not. We don't what he was need to do the only reason you need gravity is to explain the fact that you're not flung from the Earth at a thousand miles per hour near the equator due to the outward thrust generated by the spin of the Earth. That's no, what gravity no. was theorized to uh, defend no. the globe model. Which no, is- that's not uh, – John, I'm sorry you're wrong. That's not what gravity was theorized to, to, to deal with. So you're, changing, so you're changing history now. No. no I'm John, trying, trying to, John, John, you weren't – John. To understand what Newton did. Read the Principia and understand – Newton was trying to explain acceleration, force, and mass, and gravity was his way of understanding and explaining – why we are bound to the ground that we're standing on. Mm-hmm. That's a theory. And, uh-huh. objects fall and and with a certain acceleration. The very so, simple laws of motion that Newton so brilliantly derived explain to umpteen decimal places why objects move as they do. It's all because of a force, the gravitational force acting on them, that objects are accelerated when they fall at 32 feet per second per second. So do you agree that inertia is possibly an electromagnetic force? No, I don't at all. Inertia has nothing to do with electromagnetic forces. It has to do with the state of matter as matter as a source of mass that has inertia. Force Mm -hmm. equals mass times acceleration. Newton's famous equation. All of these things have nothing whatsoever to do with the globe of the Earth. They can be generalized to you know, talk about what happens on a globe, but that's not at all. So the same. Okay, so I just, just so I got this straight. The same gravity that is not that is so weak that keeps me stuck to the Earth, but mm-hmm. also keeps the atmosphere from being sucked into the uh, vacuum of space. Okay, yep. So, yep, yep. That, that that explains it perfectly. It yep. does. Mm, it does. I, I was being sarcastic, but okay. No, I, I know you were, but it does. It explains it to the T, and it also explains why if you take a steel ball bearing and roll it on a table uh, and and the table is tilted so it it is now accelerated as it's rolling faster and faster all of that which has nothing to do with the you know the atmosphere of the earth or or the shape of the earth it's just conservation acceleration and velocity all of that is explained by newton's laws that's what I'm trying to convince you of. The well, there's there basic are laws, understanding of motion. Yeah, I mean, I agree. There are laws like what goes up must come down. I agree that's a law of physics, but I, I disagree that gravity was a, and what simply the, a theory. What the source of acceleration is, which is gravity in the case that we're talking about here. Well, so what I'm trying to convince you of is that there is a reasoned approach which has been worked out with great minds, the, the real heroes of science, people like Newton and then Einstein much, much later. <laughs> and you can't deny these guys. They, they weren't – it had nothing to do with the earth being round. Of course, the earth being a globe as we know it is allowed many other things to be explained by the same basic laws of motion and allowed us to – get to the moon and to get a spacecraft out to the planet Pluto, all of that wouldn't have been possible without the physics that has been under, developed and understood over the last 350 years. So, well, he, he thinks all Pluto mission was, you know, fake anyway, so... I, I know, I know, but I... but it, 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 And it's really tragic, John, because you're missing out on some really exciting stuff. So, it's Dr. Grinley, do you... Anybody could, could have possibly you, photoshopped that's that's the that's the amazing part of it. What's do, what's do you real agree that stuff NASA is doing is fantastically better than anything. NASA some, has been lying to the, everyone. But anyways, so do you agree has, that do you agree that even if I was to show you all kinds of irrefutable proof that the Earth was not a spinning globe, that you would agree that you would never change your mind that it was indeed always going to be a spinning globe, no matter what. No, I only go on the basis of measurement and observation, John. It's not really not, it's not, okay. It's not, it's not okay. that we're bound to some, you know. Well, I uh, hope that you. I hope that you live up to that, and only you will know, you know, for the truth of whether you're actually going to live up to that. But if you go by observation and the scientific method, then there's yeah. only one correct answer, and it is not a spinning globe. Well, John, I'm afraid we're just having a, 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 a rather pointless argument because you're denying mathematics and fact. And no, measurement. I'm not. 
Well, no, no. you haven't done any of these measurements. You haven't gone out and, and you know, done the simple tabletop experiments I was talking about, which tell us that the oh, physics I can, I can tell you about it. So, is okay. all uh, something we understand. And what you're proposing, beginning with your model for the sun, which is the most fantastic con- thing that is has nothing whatsoever to do with physics, magnetic anomalies true? producing – uh, the enormous luminosity of the sun that is keeping us all warm and uh, you know alive. Uh, well, the, John, the celestial is, bodies, totally, including totally the thinking the, that you're the sun and the moon and the the stars and the wandering stars, the planets and every, you know the celestial bodies are definitely beautiful and mysterious features of our world. We, it's not a heliocentric model with an infinite okay. universe. Well, the whole uh, model think- is wrong. Uh, I'm afraid you've just missed out on the last 500 years of intellectual thought, and it's really Mm -hmm. shame. I don't know. uh, Well, either that or his science. Maybe maybe his maybe his science teacher hit him hard. It's really sad that you just have lost uh, contact with reality. Well, I'm sorry, sir, but I could say the same thing. It's been irrefutably proved Uh, that the Earth is not a spinning globe. But no matter what, until you. Until you break the programming and simply look at the evidence with an open mind, you will always dwell on a spinning globe. So, John, an open mind is looking at data, data, my friend, (laughs) pictures, real measurements, not not this uh, distorted maps with the North Pole at the center and all this perfectly visible buildings from from over fifty miles away and planes that somehow uh, have identical durations traveling east and west on a globe spinning to the east. I, no, but you 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 went through it and you glossed over it. You you didn't. Oh, I didn't gloss anything. over anything, John. You just weren't listening. You weren't understanding. No, you weren't listening. But okay, we'll agree to disagree on that too. All right. Well, listen. Well, I want to I, thank thank you both. Um, I think we've come. Unless we can discuss actual points here, we've yeah. come to a stop. I, I, John wonders how we can see the same stars overhead in the summer, but also in the winter. And of course, the answer, John, is we don't. Do you think you see the star Vega overhead in the winter, which we see overhead in more or less June and July? No, we don't. There, there because are it's on the opposite side of the sun, John. The sun's in the way. There are stars that should be totally Certainly. invisible during the entire winter that we can see overhead in the winter, and we can also see them overhead in the summer. There's no uh, way. There's no way we could ever see the same stars in the winter and compared to the summer because the sun would be behind, you know, in between the other those stars in your eye. That, that that's exactly why we don't see Vega in the winter. You're, you're one saying. star, one star. No, lots of whole constellations, John. No, that's you don't understand. You should were... never. You should never see any of the same stars in the winter versus summer. Uh, well, it. <laughs> With your model, I, I guess that's no. In the false, in the false heliocentric model, um, John, if- look, look. <laughs> let's let. Do you know the constellation Orion? Can I let's talk specific here? You know what Orion is? It's a I know what Orion is. That's visible in the in, in of course. November and December. Of course. All right. We don't see that in the spring. Okay. Precisely for the reason you're saying, the sun is in the way. It's true for every star in the sky unless you're close to the poles. We see Polaris all through the year because it's not uh, in the plane of the ecliptic. That's where the spin <laughs> axis is pointing. So we get <laughs> to see it as a The miracles of science and pretty pictures, right? What's that? So, so Polaris must be traveling millions of miles through space back and forth to maintain perfect alignment with our measly, wobbly North Pole. No, 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 John. No, it's, 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 <laughs> it's millions and hundreds of millions of miles away first uh-huh uh-huh it's so that's nearby. pretty that's a pretty perfect alignment isn't it no it's not perfect alignment i already told you that 5000 years ago it wasn't aligned over the north pole at all the earth's spin axis is wobbling in space we, so you don't agree that, that for that thing to be so many hundreds of however billions of miles away that there's not a very very nicely perfect alignment with our north pole for it to stay directly above it all year long John, the Earth is a gyroscope. Its axis is precisely fixed on the sky, on, on the, the North Pole. Sphere. <laughs> yeah. Not on the North Pole. The North I mean, Pole on the North is your pole, On the North Pole star, the, the North Pole, uh, pole star. Uh, John, Polaris <laughs> just happens to be lined up on our North Pole. <laughs> you just so you you and just have never. Twenty six thousand years from now, it will be lined up again. It's so you're not listening to me, John. <laughs> you're, you're really you're you're. you're 
The trouble, John, is you don't seem to understand basic, simple, physical facts which have been proven over centuries of thought and reason and measurement. And what you're talking about has nothing to do with measurement. No, so, what you're talking I, about has to do with nothing to do with reality, sir. Oh, I see. Well, I, it's just because you, you are living in a uh, – you're, you're back in the age of – There's no me. way – there's no it's way that years ago. our Polaris could maintain any alignment with yes, our – Yes, there is, John. It, no, sir. It, it's all something that is very simple physics. And I guess I just can't uh, convey it to you because you've obviously never – taken any basic science john also asked why don't why why uh don't we have equal 12 hour days and nights all year round and the answer is because we're living on a spinning globe <laughs> and, and we have we have the earth's axis this thing that john doesn't seem to understand that we're pointed fixed in space uh, on the celestial sphere Pointing just happened by pure happenstance to be pointing close to but not precisely at the direction of a star that we call mm -hmm. Polaris. So because the Earth's axis is tilted with respect to our orbit around the sun, the days and nights, uh, length of the day and the length of the night change. This is all basic sixth grade uh, general science that John should have learned. I hope you, he did. You that. haven't thought it. You haven't thought it through, Doctor. Because if you look at oh, the, I, thought, I teach this to my students. So I well, you've, it then you've misled. Sense. You've misled a lot of people because on an Earth that is spinning a constant speed, you should have equal twelve-hour days and nights. No, you know, no, 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 that's all, John. Look, it's because <laughs> you don't understand simple geometry. That would mm. only be true. John, if the Earth's spin axis were perpendicular to its orbit around the sun, then we would have equal days and nights. Correct. But it's not. The Earth is tilted. The tilt has That's why we have Earth. seasons, John. That's why we have winter oh. well, in the, the reason north. we have seasons is because At the opposite the time that sun the sun is in the southern Earth. hemisphere. Mm -hmm. These are all basic facts. The sun is traveling in an oscillating flat circle around the magnetic center, which is fixed on our oh. okay. See, you, you, what you've done is you have of this hopelessly contrived, complicated wheels within wheels picture, no. which is what Ptolemy and the ancients thought was going on because there was no understanding of physical reality. We now have something that we understand perfectly, and we teach it to our sixth graders, and you should have learned this way back when. And it oh, doesn't require all of the lies, I know all of the lies. I know all of the lies. So... What, what I'm trying to convince you of is that the beauty of science and that we have a really complete understanding of this is a remarkable intellectual achievement. There's no what fake. You, what NASA's you call not science, with all due respect, is not science. What you, what you call science is looking at pretty pictures and trumping what is no, measurable no, and verifiable. No, no. Pretty pictures are just a, a, a wonderful byproduct. What I call science is truth and understanding reality. What you uh -huh. are doing is inventing a reality which goes back to the, as I keep saying, the sort of Ptolemaic view, wheels no, with sir. wheels, no, magnetic sir. anomalies, all of these things that are uh, contrived uh, realities to make to make the, things consistent. The contrived with falsity is the globe model, and anybody can verify that we indeed live on a flat stationary plane. No, no. I, think we've, I, think we've gone, I think we've gone as far as we can go because uh, you're, you're – oh, I've still got this. nine more points to make, but yeah, if you want to – Well, go. Uh, as I told Art, uh, this, this debate is interesting. It's been fun, and I respect your point of view. I'm not trying to put you down. But what I've tried to convince you of over the last hour and a half is that the real picture that all the rest of the world believes, I think you're in a very small minority, as I'm sure you must realize. And for some reason, I, I'm still fascinated to uh, think about or understand whatever led you to uh, adopt this view mm. on such a recent time scale as six months ago. There must have been some remarkable thing that happened. Yeah, that, there was. And, and again, I was simply compelled to, to look at the evidence and scrutinize both models and draw uh, okay. rational, verifiable conclusions. And okay. I wish you would do the same thing. Okay. Well, John, this is what I do every day. I do verifiable models and... and well, by saying uh, that gravity is a proved fact, you are not a scientist, sir. Oh, That's John, John, listen, this, this gets to be the point where it's just not useful to, to discuss. Uh, it's well, not just me thinking that gravity is a proven fact. This goes back to gravity all of physics. So I, I, I refuse to 
you know, there are points at which I, I, I'm sorry. All right, this is that point. So you know what, Doctor? I'm going to thank you. Hold on, John. Hold on. Doctor, I'm going to thank you for being here. I'm going to invite you back so we can do a show on everything that you do know about. And I well, I, I think I know everything about what uh, this fellow John <laughs> is is talking about. But I find it very disappointing that somebody who clearly can at least articulate, yes. uh, but not describe very accurately even his theory. Although I think I see the broad picture of it, um, it's it's I, I think just very unfortunate that that one can come to such a limited view and perspective of what the real world is. The when irony one has, in that statement When is one has the natural beauty of what the real world is to, to understand it right at your fingertips. It's what all of science is all about. You can't just throw it out the window no. and, 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 you and go back to yeah. this uh, early primitive it. way of thinking that we must be on a flat earth. Uh, it's not primitive. For it to be true, for what for John it, uh, says to be true, so much has to be thrown out the window and the rest of it has to be just labeled fake. Yeah. Well, mm, no, um, I don't yeah. think everything has to be labeled fake. I think that uh, we've all been misled as an entire <laughs> species to one specific end, which is to essentially um, trick us into believing we live on a finite and closed system with no escape. And they've done a great job of it because even the rational, skeptical, scientific, very brilliant minds of the world are trapped in a matrix of a globe model. And, and until you can just really why, – Why do you – so, John, why do you suppose you know, millions of people, sci- scientifically uh, educated people, many millions, hundreds of millions really – could all be so uh, completely trapped in this totally false view because it's all and done why, uh, since and we've been very question. young since we've been very young it's drilled into our paradigm and we never ever question it that's why i'm telling oh, you I, this is what science is all about questioning questioning no it questioning. isn't sir because I, because nope. i've already proved to you in this conversation that the world is flat and stationary no but you have say, not John. but then you, you may point think to you have but, you, of but your proof is demonstrably wrong and i'm not going to go back over it i've pointed out to you no you've ways got that your so-called proof is ridiculous. We can measure distances. We you know that we're living on a spherical surface. So uh, we're not, we're, we're not going to go back over this again. <laughs> this is where we started an hour and a half ago. Sure. So again, the tragedy is you're just denying intellectual uh, history and thinking. It has nothing to do with being led astray. It's the opposite. It's the exact opposite. What science does is to confront the very primitive ways we could only understand our world uh, back in prehistoric times, what you're proposing is, of course, exactly what everybody thought more or less must be the case. We're on a flat earth that began as a, on the back of a turtle or God knows what. Uh, all of this has taken over tens of thousands of years, but really only over the last 500 years, 2,000 years, again, going back to the Greeks, uh, to finally be clarified, and there's no fakery or you know misleading uh, thing going on, but which is of course what you require uh, to make your theory stand up in light of all the evidence. And when you say, well, that actually, the, the simple, fake, the, the simple, the, verifiable it, truth reveals what, what has what, nothing to do with the globe. The globe is demonstrably false, and in fact, it's preposterous if you if you well, scrutinize uh, it. Okay, at that point, John, I'm sorry, I'm going to sign off because it. Uh, I, I've tried to, con- you know, make you aware of the beauty. So of you've science. regurgitated the programming is all you've done. Well, I, he, actually, I think he's done a great job, Doctor. I want to have you back and talk about black holes. Pulsars, all kinds of good things. Okay, well, we'll we'll uh, we'll be happy to do that at some point. But the, this is this is quite disappointing to uh, see that there could still be this view out there amongst a small segment of society. I know from what little I've heard about this uh, this group, but it just shows that our whole education system still has a ways to go. Although, on the whole, it is doing well because most people. Everybody, I would say, uh, has generally been taught and not felt that they've been brainwashed or whatever John may be suggesting 
into some very peculiar view, but instead is the in a world learning, of, lies, the learning the of the general is scientific here, realm is 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 there for the most part. All and right, so. Doctor, I'm I'm going to break it off with you and say thank you, and I I want to have you back and talk about all the other stuff if we can do that. Okay. All right, Doctor, okay. thank you uh, so very much. Yep, you're very welcome. All right, so uh, John, we've still got you and time for a a final statement from you, uh, uh, John. Sure, and you know I appreciate you uh, having me on, Art. It's been a real honor. I'm flattered. Um, I, I disagree with the doctor, you know, and, and I think oh, he's I uh, certainly a very smart, intelligent person. But um, I, I really have looked at this. I've thought about it. I, I wouldn't be out here um, shouting from the roof, rooftops that I believe that we live on a flat you know, stationary plane, unless I had uh, scrutinized it, verified it. And unfortunately, the even the scientific people of the world are simply unable to even just hypothesize that we live on anything but a globe. And in fact, if you do look at the evidence and scrutinize it and, and certain things we can verify and prove, um, the, the globe Earth model, the heliocentric model is indeed wrong. Okay. Well, you know, again, from my point of view, as I listened and I wouldn't have missed this for all the world. Um, so many things have to either be wrong or fake or just so far out for anybody to grasp what it is that you've been saying. But nevertheless, listen, I appreciate your being here tonight. I appreciate your making the argument. People who have never heard this argument made before probably have their chins on their chests. I appreciate your being here, John. Take care. <laughs> 